So I've got another PS5. This one is off the same customer as the one I've just done, which if you're watching this back as a video, it was a trace repair. So if this makes a video, apparently this one's got no power. I've seen a few of these on eBay recently with no face plates. So I'm wondering if that's where this has come from. I'm wondering if someone's bought it off eBay and then sold it and then sent it to me for repair. Let's just see what happens when I try and turn it on. Okay, it's a continuous single beep with no light and the eject button works. Alright, we've seen this quite a few times. It's normally a 3.3 or 5 volts short. Now the question is, is this one going to be the same? So if you're watching this back as a video, I am live streaming. But if you are watching it as a video and you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe because I am awesome in every way, shape and form. No, I'm kidding, but you might learn something. So please subscribe, make my parents look proud of me, or make my parents proud of me, make me look popular, and uh, everyone will be happy. Except maybe you, when you realise how ugly I am. Ah, ugly cam. Hope that scared a few people. <laughs> anyway, if you don't subscribe, I'm gonna shoot you. Oh dear. I have to gauge me. gorge my eyes out. Yep. Bring it on. <laughs> Face only Travis's mom could love. Ooh. That's cold, yo. My desolder gun will take your drill. Yeah, well, I've got a scalpel. Dr. Phil's in the house. <laughs> wow, this fan is. Very, very clean. Yeet, motherfucker. Wah, wah, wah. This might not have ever been taken. Oh, all right, and so it has. All right. Ha. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Do we do 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 we do 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 what the hell has happened here? Do da do da. What the hell has happened here? Whoa de do da day. Hey, let's not test for voltages. Do da do da. Let's not test for voltages. Oh de do da day. Hey, what have you done, dude? What have you done? What has someone done to you? Tut, tut, tut. Oh, wow, it's actually eaten away at the um, foam. Oh, someone's melted it with a soldering iron. Damn, what the hell? Something's not good there on that foam. Wow, what's happened to this? Has someone heated this up? That shouldn't be that stuck. Wow, what? Oh dear. What's happened to this? Like, really, like, what has happened to this? That's going to have to come off. Okie dokie. Okay, what do we get here? Uh, it jumps up to 0 0.03 milliamps and then it drops straight back down to zero. So it, something is detecting a short and shutting, it, shutting itself off immediately. 5 volt, damn it, I mean, I was in diode mode. Do we get 5 volt? There we do. 3.3, yep. Do we get 5 here? Yep. 3.3 here? Yes. 5. 
two. Do we get 12 there? Yeah. Get 12 there. Get 12 there. Let me get a test power button. Do we get anything up here? No, we do not. Not giving any signs of life from up here. So we've got no 2.5 volt. Do we get a 1.1 volt? No, we do not. So we're not generating a 1.1 volt either. I assume we're not giving a 5 volt up here. No. Right, we're missing quite a few rails here. That is dead short to ground, my friends. Continuity. That encoder's bad. I don't need to do any more tests. That encoder's bad. Has it got any damage to the port? It looks like a factory port. Mm, the port's not great. I'll probably change that just as uh, an added bonus. Yeah, the port's not the best in the world, but that encoder is bad. So I'm getting a short on those caps around the uh, HDMI encoder. So that's that's responsible for muxing the video and audio signals. That one's actually reading 500 ohms. I'm going to bet Travis's mom's pension that we've got a bad encoder. I mean, I could inject one volt into that area, just for shits and giggles. So this is a 1.8 volt line, I think. Actually, it might be a 3.3, I don't know. But I'm not going to go higher than 1.8. Let's put some IPA there. Sorry, I'm not going to go higher than 1 volt. Interestingly, that's not getting warm. Let's go up a little bit. Let's go to 1.5. Someone said run cap, and I think they're right. It's getting a little bit hot in, in here. Yeah, all right. Well, there you go, then. That wasn't a short one. I think you'll find that one short as well. Sort of. Amateur. Amateur, you say? I think you'll find... Okay, that's coming off overload. All right, then, fine. Whatever. 46 ohms. All right, then, I am an amateur. I still found that short within seconds, though, didn't I? Come on. Get off. Rick and Morty did it. No, it was definitely Travis, mate. It was definitely Travis. He does it for revenge because I'm nobbing his mom. Come on, I know I've put some encoders in here somewhere. Haha, -ha. knew it. Got him. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do to your mom later, Travis. Ha 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 ha. There we go. Right, 
Let's get rid of that solder blob. There we go. A nice shiny new encoder on there. Right, so what is the deal now? Let's just sort out this liquid metal on here as well. Let's suck up that liquid metal so I can clean the APU heatsink. I'll test it without liquid metal for now, just to make sure, well, just to see if it powers on. It still doesn't work. Rip. I did it like that because it's quicker, by the way, to remove the nozzle and whatnot. Why is it coming up short with the chip on? That don't make a lot of sense, does it? What the hell is going on with this one? Comes up a short with the chip on, but nothing with the chip off. Inject voltage, it's coming up open line. Hang on. Oh no, it's not. I thought it was liquid metal, but it's not. Like seriously, what the hell has happened here though? There's a little bit of liquid metal there. It could be that we've got liquid metal spots. Like little spots of liquid metal that we can't quite see. Okay, that's not reading a short. Uh, tell you what I'll do. I'll use the bench supply just to speed it up. I'll know just by the boot sequence if it's going to work or not. No. It is not going to work. We're getting absolutely zero current draw. That's not normal. Unless that encoder is not quite soldered right, because it won't attempt to turn on at all without an encoder on it. So if that's all, so if I've just seen that run and it's not soldered fully, then it won't attempt to turn on. That might have been one pin off actually. Lost the cap there. Five volts. Three point three. Three point three. Five. Five. I'm getting three point three volts at the power button. Okay, so. Yeah, now I have absolutely no boot sequence, but I am getting 3.3 volts at the power button now. Uh, well, sorry, I'm getting 3.3 volts at the power button. Let me just try something real quick. Okay. 
If you're wondering what I've just tried there, I'll just switch the BIOS over. Now I'll get a boot sequence. So the encoder went bad and the BIOS has gone bad. Wah, wah, wah. That's going to boot when I plug this in. The encoder's gone bad and the BIOS has gone bad. Watch this. Just so you know, I'm not, not switching the board. Can't leave this on for long because I've got no liquid metal on there. Wah, wah, wah. I'm going to take two minutes. Well, I'm going to remove my BIOS. I need that BIOS. Uh, to answer any questions, no, I cannot use this BIOS. I can, it will boot. And it will work until it comes to needing an update. As soon as it updates, it'll brick the console forevermore. Even if you manage to get the original con uh, BIOS working. If you try and update it with an old, uh, a different BIOS, it will completely and utterly brick it. Now that being said, I have had it in the past where removing the BIOS for 10 minutes off the board does sometimes fix it. So I'm going to leave that off there for 10 minutes and what I'm going to do while I'm doing that, I'm going to coat this area here in conformal coating because I can't put any liquid metal on this. So if you're wondering how I knew that was the BIOS, it's because of the boot sequence. So the BIOS chip, this Winbond chip here, it contains some of the secure keys for the um, disk drive and things like that, but it also contains boot sequences. So when you plug power in, the first chip, the very first chip to get power is the BIOS chip. The BIOS chip checks for the shorts and things like that, so it'll check for any shorts like on the 3.3, 1.1, 1.8 1 volt, etc, etc, etc. If it finds a problem, it will just shut off. Um, and it won't allow any of the power rails to fire up. But, it will also not give any power rails at all. Sorry, it'll give the power rails, but it won't start that initial boot sequence if the BIOS chip is bad. So what should happen is the BIOS chip should, uh, sorry, the, the board should fire up and it should steadily climb from 0 amps to 300 milliamps and then drop back down to 40 milliamps and it should hold steady at 40 milliamps while it wait, waits for the power on signal. If that BIOS chip's not working, you've got no boot sequence, you've got no boot sequence, you've got no, um, no uh, power when you press the button. Those chips cost literally, and I'm not even joking, I bought 10 this morning, and they cost me 45 pence each, so 50 cents they cost. Maybe we've got 128,734 in stock. Uh, there might be a case where I can, if I can't get the chip to work once I've left it off for 10 minutes, it might be a case where I can hook it up to a... Uh, a flash reader and clone it over but that's hit and miss and I haven't got a flash reader at the minute I need to buy a new one because I haven't got the right one for that chip so this might have to go back into the pending pile for a couple of days while I order a flash reader depending on whether it resets the chip by staying off the board so yeah what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to cake this in conformal coating, cure that, and then just hope and pray that it works. So I'll cake this in coating just because I want to be able to put liquid metal on it again, and I'm not going to be able to do that. While all of the caps are exposed, so I'll cake them in liquid metal, uh, in conformal coating. This is just like a UV glue, it'll insulate the caps, stop them from shorting out if any liquid metal spills over. Could you maybe read the content of your working bias and upload it somewhere for analysis? Uh, no. And the simple reason for that is I don't want to be liable for any kind of. Um, lawsuits or anything like that. I don't want to be held responsible for um, uploading uh, Sony's intellectual property, unfortunately. So, no, I can't do that, mate. UV hurting my TV screen. Good. <laughs> All right. Alrighty then, let's see if it gives me a boot sequence. Probably not. Does it yes or no? Please give me a boot sequence. Yes! Give me a boot sequence. <laughs> Get reset, bitch. Get reset, bitch. Oh, I got a boot sequence. Oh, I got a boot sequence. Na 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 na. Oh, I got a boot sequence, and it's all mine. You're not. No, no, it's mine. Oh, that board's hot. <laughs> ah, good point, Gibbo, my little Pokemon. I've also got to clean the board and straighten out the boss chip because that's a little bit wonky. But I've got a boot sequence. Do do. Oh, there's actually two missing caps. Ha! Huh. I think I was going to change the HDMI port on this as well because it's a little bit damaged. I've had that before, Ellis. With this BIOS issue, put it back together and it don't work. Uh, yeah, let's flick a new HDMI on here because I really don't trust that port. What I'm thinking is it might have been dropped during an update um, and it's corrupted the BIOS and damaged the encoder. But yeah, let's flick a new port on. I won't charge a customer for the port. What's going on with this soldering iron tip? You will take some solder, Mr. Soldering Iron Tip. So I'm literally only changing this just because the port was a little bit damaged. No other reason, I wouldn't be charging the customer for it because it's probably not absolutely necessary to do. Now nah, I'll sort the tip out later on. It'll be alright. Do 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 do. Wee, wee. I said wee. Oh wow, that tip really is oxidised, isn't it? All right, I'll sort it out now. Don't stop.
Okay, we are good to go on that one. Huh? Yeet, motherfucker! Beep, beep, beep! Yeah, buddy! So, I'm gonna say that this probably got knocked on the floor or something and damaged the HDMI port, which damaged the HDMI encoder, and also it was probably updated at the time, and that bricked the thing. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy that we succeeded in uh, our quest to save yet another PS5.